Welcome to Simpler Bible, a daily journey to biblical understanding. Episode 19 today, we are cruising right along. We are in Genesis 40 and 41. We picked up, or we pick up where we left off, Joseph in prison. Joseph is in prison for something he did not do, and yet we see that God is taking care of Joseph and blessing him even in prison. So today we're talking about Joseph interprets. And so yesterday Joseph had some dreams. Today Joseph is interpreting those dreams, or some new dreams. Begin with me in Genesis 40, beginning in verse 1. Sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense. Let me pause here. A cupbearer is uh, a food taster, if you will, for kings, for royalty. In case the king's going to be poisoned, the cupbearer is the one who puts the cup, puts the food into the king's hand. He samples it all first, makes sure it's okay. I don't know that I would, I don't like to drink or eat after other people. So I would be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> Thanks for tasting that for me. I'm okay. But like, anyway, that's what the cupbearer does. So let me begin again. Sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker committed an offense against the Lord, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard appointed Joseph to be with them, and he attended to them. They continued for some time in custody. So Joseph, because he's in charge of everything, gets to be in charge of the king's servants even in jail. And so... Uh, it says here in verse 5, One night they both dreamed, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, each his own dream, each with its own interpretation. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he could see that they were troubled. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in custody in the master's house, Why are your faces so downcast today? They said to him, We have had dreams and there is no one to interpret them. Joseph said, Do not interpretations belong to God. Please tell them to me. So the chief cupbearer tells his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream there was a vine in front of me, and on the vine there were three branches, and as soon as it budded, it blossomed, shot forth, and the clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Joseph goes, Ah, oh, this is the interpretation. The three branches are three days. In three days Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office, and you will place Pharaoh's cup in his hand as formerly, when you were his cupbearer. Great interpretation, right? Look at what Joseph says in verse 14. Only remember me when it goes well with you. Please do me this kindness and mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. For I was indeed stolen out of the land of the Hebrews, and here I have done nothing that they should put me into a pit. So the land of the Hebrews at this point is his family of about 70 people. For I was indeed stolen out of the land of the Hebrews, and I've done nothing that they should put me in the pit. And this is comical to me. Maybe it shouldn't be. I have a very dark and twisted sense of humor sometimes. Verse 16 says, when the chief baker saw that the inter interpretation was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. So he hears the great report in three days. The cupbearer is going to be back in Egypt serving the king. The chief baker goes, hey, I had a dream too. And he's excited about what Joseph's got to say about it. He goes, I also had a dream and there were three cake baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket, there were all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating it out of the basket of my head. Joseph answered and said to him, this is the interpretation. Three baskets are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from off of you and hang you on a tree. That's probably the way it's used in the rest of the Bible is being impaled on a pole and the birds will eat the flesh from you. I just, I, I just can't get over this moment. Like, it is one of the, I love the story of Joseph anyway, but I, I try to imagine this, this moment. And I know, I know it's not like this. I know it's not. If you, if you hear me preach on Sunday mornings, you'll hear me say that the Bible is kind of like a cartoon in my head. So I picture Joseph sitting there at some kind of rudimentary table in this prison with his coffee and his morning paper. He's working the crossword or whatever. In come these two guys. They look dejected. He's like, guys, what's wrong? You didn't sleep well? They're like, no, we had these weird dreams. And the cupbearer tells him his dream. And Joseph goes, oh, great news. In three days, your head will be lifted up. You'll be restored to your position. You'll be back in Pharaoh's house. Meanwhile, I kind of imagine the, the baker, he's over there getting his, his paltry meal together and he's eating it. And he's like, hey, that's great news. I had a dream also. Three baskets of bread on my head. The birds were eating the bread. Joseph goes, hey man, easy dream. In three days, your head will be lifted up from off of you and you will be impaled on a pole and the birds will eat your flesh. And I just, 
I just think of the emotional kind of roller coaster that this moment must have been. They're both dejected. They don't understand their dreams. Now the cupbearer is rejoicing that he's going to be restored to his position in three days. And then the whole mood is just killed with, oh, and by the way, Baker, you're going to die and the birds will eat the flesh uh, from your skin. And it's just, it, it's just a wild moment. And maybe I enjoy it way too much. Uh, verse 20, on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast for all of his servants and lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. He restored the cupbearer to his position and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted. And then look at this, verse 23, yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. How? How in the world? Three days ago, you had this dream. Three days ago. On the same day, on Pharaoh's birthday, you and the baker get brought out of prison. Three days later, you get restored to your job. The baker gets killed. And you're not, it's not like you forgot that these were your dreams. Like these were your dreams three days ago. It is unfolding in front of you. And you're going, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And you don't think to go, Pharaoh, I got to tell you, man, this was a crazy thing. Let me tell you this story. He forgets. How long does he forget? A day, two days, three days, a month. No, two years. Two years he forgets. Look at chapter 41, verse 1. The next sentence says, After two whole years, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the, the Nile. Behold, there came up out of the Nile seven cows, attractive and plump. They fed in the reed grass. After them came seven other cows, ugly and thin. And they came out of the Nile and stood by the fat, sleek cows on the bank of the Nile. The ugly, thin cows ate up the seven attractive, plump cows, and Pharaoh awoke. He fell asleep and dreamed a dream a second time. Second time, which means what? It's very important. And behold, seven ears of grain, plump and good, were growing on one stalk. And behold, after them sprouted seven ears, or think of, think of corn. It'll help you picture this. So seven ears of corn, plump and good, were growing on one stalk. After them came seven ears of corn, thin and blighted by the east wind. The thin ears swallowed up the seven plump ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was just a dream. In the morning, his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men. And Pharaoh told him his dreams, but no one could interpret it to him. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, hey, I remembered something. <laughs> so here's how this is playing out. What's the job of the cupbearer? To bring the food to Pharaoh so that he can make sure he's not poisoned. So here Pharaoh is. He's woke. He's awake in the morning. He's, he's distressed. He's sitting at breakfast. The cupbearer is bringing him his food. He's calling for all the magicians and all the entrancers and all the wise men of Egypt. He's going, look, guys, I had some wild dreams last night. What does it mean? And no one, no one can tell him. And this, this is a very similar story to what we'll see in the book of Daniel in years from now, not literally for us, but in terms of the Bible, the cupbearer goes, ah, so Pharaoh, I just remembered something. And that's verse nine, verse 10. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me and the chief baker in custody in the house of the captain of guard, we dreamed on the same night, two dreams, each of us having a dream with his own interpretation. A young Hebrew man was there, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving us an interpretation to each man according to his dream. And he interpreted to us, so it came about. I was restored to my office, and the baker was hanged. Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they quickly brought him out of the pit. And when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard that you can hear a dream and interpret it. Joseph said, it is not within me, but God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Similar thing to what he said to the two men in, in prison two years earlier. So Pharaoh recounts the dreams to Joseph. And then look here at verse 25. Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years of plenty and the seven good ears are seven years of drought or famine. And the dreams are one and the same. The seven lean cows and ugly cows that come after them are seven years and the seven empty ears uh, blighted by the east wind are also seven years of famine. It is as I told Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what is he, about, he is about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout the land of Egypt, but after them there will arise seven years of famine, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land, and the plenty will be unknown in the land by reason of the famine that follows, for it will be very severe. And I've been telling you this, so here it is again. The doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that the thing is fixed by God, and God will shortly bring it about. So this doubling of the dream, he had the dream twice, 
two versions of the same dream so that he would know and understand that what God was about to do, he was going to do quickly. Verse 33, now therefore let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man, set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint overseers over the land and take one fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years. Let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities and let them keep it. The food shall be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are occur in the land of Egypt so that the land will not perish throughout this time of famine. The proposal pleased Pharaoh and all of his servants. Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find a man like this in whom is the Spirit of God? Take note of that. In whom is the Spirit of God? Uh, in the Old Testament, most of the time, including guys as noble as Moses, it says the Spirit of God came on them or the Spirit of God was on them. There are only a couple of places in the Old Testament where it says the Spirit of God was in someone. We see it here in Joseph. We see it also in Daniel. There's one or two other places it's in contrast to the New Testament where all of us who have put faith in Christ have the Spirit of God dwelling in us. And so this was a rare thing in, in these days. The Spirit of God would come on people and empower them for certain tasks, but the Spirit of God is in Joseph. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, verse 39, Since God has shown you all this, there is no one so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and all of my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards the throne will I be greater than you. See, I have set you over the land of Egypt. So this is super cool. And, and, and Joseph at this point, uh, we haven't gotten to it yet, but you'll see down in verse 46, Joseph is 30 at this point. You might remember in verse in chapter 37, he was 17 when his brothers sold him into slavery. And so it's been 13 years since he since he was sold into slavery by his brothers. And so he's 30 years old now. He's risen to power in Egypt. And, and it really does matter because he was bought by Potiphar. So he was part of, of kind of the royalty. He, he was a servant in the house of someone who was royal and he excelled there. So he didn't go to like a common prison. He went to a prison for... The, the people of the king and that kind of stuff, which is why he's able to be there for the cupbearer and the, the baker, which is why he rises to power in the prison and which is why he's able to now stand before Pharaoh. And so here he is 13 years later standing before Pharaoh and he is given charge over everything in Egypt. Did, did you notice what happened? He goes into Potiphar's house and he becomes the greatest in Potiphar's house, only second to Potiphar himself. He goes into the jail and becomes second in over the jail and the jailer leaves all things in his charge. And now he comes to Pharaoh and now he's second in command of Egypt, the whole nation, only second in regard to Pharaoh. Why does this matter? Well, as we're going to see in the coming days, this matters because God is putting Joseph in this place to pr protect the people of Israel, to protect the Hebrews. And Joseph is a, a forerunner, somebody that God sends ahead to protect the rest of the nation. He does the same thing with Moses in Exodus. Moses lives in Pharaoh's palace, is called a son of Pharaoh's daughter. He grows up among the Egyptians, and that is to protect the Israelites. The same thing happens with Daniel in the book of Daniel, when he is taken into captivity in Babylon 13 years before the rest of the Jews are brought into Babylon, roughly 13 years, so that he can, he can be in position of power when the Israelites are brought into captivity in Babylon. Or Esther, who becomes queen in the book of Esther, so that she can protect protect the Israelites. So God is constantly putting people like Joseph, Moses, Daniel, Esther, he's putting them ahead of time in positions of authority so that they can preserve and protect the nation that God made a covenant to Abraham about. All of this is about God's promise. All of this is about God bringing about what he said that he would fulfill. So join me in verse 42 and let's finish up this chapter. Pharaoh took a signet ring from his hand, put it on Joseph's hand, clothed him in gar garments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. He made him ride in his second chariot and they called out before him, bow the knee. So the people are bowing the knee to, to Joseph and he set him over the land of Egypt. Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh and without your consent, no one shall lift up hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh called Joseph's name uh, Zaphanath, Panea, that's a long name, and gave him in marriage Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On. So Joseph went out over the land of Egypt, and Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh. And so for seven years of plenty, he gathers up all the food, puts it into storerooms, so that it, there's so much, the Bible says in verse 49, it couldn't even be measured. Verse 50 says, before the year of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph and to his wife, 
Joseph called the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, God has made me to forget my hardship and all of my father's house. He called the second one Ephraim, for he says, God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenty occurred, and they came to an end, and the seven years of famine began, and there was food in the land of Egypt, and the rest of the world was destitute. Listen to these last few verses. When all of the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do whatever he says. So when the famine spread over the whole land, Joseph opened the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians for the famine was severe in the land. Moreover, all the earth came to Joseph. This is foreshadowing. All the earth came to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was severe over the whole earth. And of course, if you know this story, you know that we are about to see Joseph's brothers again because famine has struck even where they are living and they are going to need some food. But we will pick up with that tomorrow. Thanks for listening and joining us, and we'll see you for day 20. Thank you so much for journeying with us today at Simpler Bible through another section of scripture where we come to know and understand God a little bit better. Look, if you're brand new to Simpler Bible, we have all sorts of resources available for you. Go to our website, simplerbible.com, and there you can find these videos, you can find our podcast, you can find links to our social media, and you can even find a blog post with additional scriptures if you want to go into a little bit more study than we had time to cover in this podcast and video today. We hope that this tool will be exactly that for you, a tool. Not something that replaces your daily walk with God, but something that enhances your daily walk with God and helps you to know and enjoy Him more. Thank you so much for being part of this, and we'll see you again tomorrow.